This is the story of Laura Soretta, 1469 to 1499. All human beings, women included, are born with the right to an education. Knowledge is not given as a gift, but is gained with diligence. The free mind, unafraid of labor, presses on to attain the good. Laura Soretta had a particularly auspicious upbringing. While most Renaissance women were imprisoned by their domestic duties, Laura had been surrounded by people who nurtured her intellectual exports. Her father and her beloved husband sheltered her thirst for knowledge and altruism. She spent several years in convents, learning to read and write in Latin, and many sleepless nights plagued by insomnia, where she would ponder the meaning of existence. Unfortunately, the Renaissance was a misogynistic era, and most men did not take Laura's exploits very well. I don't believe this! How these lies are allowed to be perpetuated and published? It's the work of the devil. This charlatan must be silenced before her putrescence destroys this country. Who's that, dear? Her name is, uh, Soretta. Uh, Laura. Laura Soretta. She's quickly becoming famous for her talents in Latin composition. But I suspect plagiarism. Probably the work of her father. This, this is far beyond a woman's capabilities. Imagine it. A woman writing about philosophy, war, God? It's ridiculous. You don't think a woman could write something? What? Intelligent? Comprehensive? The mere thought of it is ludicrous. She must be exposed. I need you to seek this woman out. Demand that she replicate a letter of the same quality that she is claimed to have written by herself. Bring that letter to me. Now! Yes, husband. So Laura's dissenter sent his wife to witness her capabilities. While the woman thought her exploits were laughable, Laura explained to her. We must recognize the iniquities implemented by the men who force their authority onto our lives. Your husband, I'm afraid to say, is fearful. He and his kin carefully perpetuate a prison of ignorance for us. I tell you, it's an expression of their infirmity. They look into the face of a woman, and instead of seeing a comrade, they see an enemy. Your husband degrades you. He breaks your spirit until you're no greater than the dirt you brush off his shoes. He tells you that you're worthless and trivial. No. He tells you that your entire gender is worthless. I, however, had more fortunate people in my life. My father nurtured my accomplishments. Laura, my dear child, I will impart onto you these truths. He told me. There will be a lot of people who try to keep you down. They will tell you that you cannot do many things and that you're not smart enough. They will tell you what you must do, and those things will be confined. When my father passed away, I was determined to carry on his legacy. In all his wisdom, he gave me this piece of advice. Remember, whenever you doubt yourself, you are Laura Serena. The visit from her dissenter's husband marked the pivotal turn to public addresses on gender relations. Laura responded to the accusations with one of the greatest offenses on the education of women in Quattrocentro, Italy. You brashly and publicly not merely wonder, but indeed lament, that I am said to possess as fine a mind as nature ever bestowed upon the most learned man. You pretend to admire me as a female prodigy, but there lurks sugar deceit in your adulation. You wait perpetually in ambush to entrap my lovely sex, and overcome by your hatred, seek to trample me underfoot and dash me to the earth. But you would better have crept upon a mole than on a wolf, for a mole with its dark vision can see nothing around it, while a wolf's eyes glow in the dark. For the wise person sees by the force of mind, and anticipating what lies ahead, proceeds by the light of reason. These works held enough brevity to set the foundation for the 18th century feminist movement. Laura Soretta was undoubtedly a pioneer of humanity whose brave contributions created the world we know today.